Hello, it's me, and you see before you the family of cubic copters. So the thing about copters, and eventually we're going to go to looking at this Kirby Copter 3, but just to kind of get a perspective on things, when initially introducing what a copter is, it's a purely edge-turning puzzle. So instead of turning on the face, like a Rubik's Cube, instead of turning on the edge, like a, rather, yeah, turning on the corner, like a dino cube, this turn on the edge. Now, the dino cube, the corner turners were fairly straightforward puzzles, a lot like, um, almost like pyramixes in terms of the ease of solve. So it wasn't, wasn't too bad, but edge turners introduced us to this very fascinating concept of jumbling. So it would appear that 180 degree turns are all that's needed, and if that were the case, then it would be a pretty easy puzzle to solve. Now, without getting too much into detail, what was found is that if we went 60 degrees off, well, let's do it over here, 60 degrees, we could actually make another turn, which enhanced the strategy or the challenge a little bit because it actually caused shape shifting. Then upon doing that, we can turn it here, turn it back. We also found another interesting facet to this. So the classic example here is we'll move this up across here, take this all the way 180 degrees over here, maybe turn this back, and we're stuck. We're stuck with this. And we can't seem to get out of that. The jumbling has to do with the just the mechanism of the puzzle itself, the external mechanism over here. So we're stuck with this. So then came the curvy copter. So how did the curvy copter expand on the a helicopter, well, it gave us these little edges here. These edges had to be correlated with the solve. Now, the solve itself wasn't too different, except now we had to orient edges over here, but the process of jumbling was still very much in play, so it couldn't happen. But we had to bear in mind the aspect, same aspects with this, the notions of what's called orbits. Things will only go within the orbits unless you jumble them out of that. Uh, but you also had to deal with these guys too and still um, end up with jumbling. So it was a nice little next step kind of a thing to the whole edge turning process. Get this back over here and splat. Well then came this, this Curvy Copter Plus. And uh, what was done very brilliantly is they divided these over here so you had extra pieces. What that in essence did is if I tried to do my jumbling moves, come across here, bring this down. Now normally, in a case like this, if I tried the same thing, move it down, I'd be jumbled. I couldn't do anything, but here I've effectively taken out the jumbling. And the reason that I uh, was able to do that is because I took this portion of the uh, edge, this inner portion over here, and I actually turned it into a corner. So I can exchange a corner for an edge piece, just like this. So because of that, that caused very interesting aspects of solving because this little corner piece here uh, looks exactly like these over here. If I exchange those, I can end up with certain parities of these edges that you don't get with this. So uh, parities of reduction occur with this because you're reducing edges over here. So that was a very nice little addition to this whole curvy copter aspect. So, what was then done is they came up with this guy, which is the Curvy Copter 3. So what does this add to it? Where do we go from here? Well, first off, you can see that there's a lot more, a lot more noise in here. There's a lot more going on here. You've got these pedals that are here, but these pedals, instead of being just divided in the middle, they're actually cut deeper. So this is a cut that goes right to the center. Here, the cut goes beyond the center. It goes through here. So you actually have overlapping cuts. When you have overlapping cuts, you get what I call the Rex phenomenon. The Rex phenomenon is if you take, say, a um, dino cube, and again, this cuts right into the center. If you cut it deeper, so that it, um, it actually cuts deeper on both sides, you end up with this, the Rex cube. So this is the same kind of thing, but we've got a deeper cut over here. When you get a deeper cut, you actually get these these extra pieces here that can be moved and shuttled around. It's like a little inching that they can do. So in doing this, you not only have the aspects that, that, um, that rotate, but you also have these inner aspects here that have their own kind of motion. And because of that, after solving your standard 
uh, cube portion of it, you have to deal with these guys here. Well, so too, by doing these deep cuts here, these deep cuts cause overlapping movements to occur, and when that happens, you store, sort of bring these out of it. And when bringing that out of it, they actually give you more pieces that you have to solve. So the actual solving experience of this initially is not much different than the other curvy copters, but now we have these extra pieces that give us this Rex phenomenon, that, that give us these inner pedals, and these inner pedals can move independently and kind of inch along each other so that they uh, kind of have a life of their own. In this case, we do it very uh, corner-like. In this case, we do it edge-like, so we can have an exchange from here. So the question is, in terms of solving, how am I going to do this? How is it different? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a scramble and solve of this, including jumbling, because, you know, it's part of the puzzle. It's part of the appeal. So we might as well. Uh, the movement of this puzzle is actually very good. And you can do some normal, standard scrambles with this, 180 degrees type things. And then what you're finding as you're doing this is you're causing a lot more mix-up than you had with the other puzzles. Now, you're not going to get any parodies or any situations like that with this, aside from what you get with the normal jumbling aspect. Now, in order to make sure that jumbling is going to occur, then I, I'm going to do a jumbling maneuver, a single jumble maneuver, where I take this up and I take this down. Now, in doing this, what's going to happen is that this edge here and this edge here are, are going to swap orbits. What an orbit is, an orbit is a place that's locked into its movement. So this can only go to here, or here, or here. Because that's where that 180 degrees will take you. Here, here, or here. So if you just do 180 degree movements like that, it can't go to here or to here. So it has to go through there. That's the orbits that it goes into. In order to get it out of the orbits, what you have to do is a single jumble move. So this can't go here doing 180 degree turns, but if I turn this up and this down, exchange the two, then what I've done is I've exchanged those orbits over here. Move this back over there. So to ensure that that's happening, I'm gonna swap these two up across and around. So now I know that these two are now out of its orbits. And so from time to time, I'm gonna do something like that. Turn around over here and down. Now there's also something called the double jumble maneuver. That's where you do it on the one side. Gotta line it up, this puzzle loves to move. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and that's gonna come in handy later. So I'm just gonna do a couple more jumbled moves. Now I'm calling them jumbled moves even though we're not jumbled. I'm doing a shape-shifting aspect to what's going on in order to make that happen. So turn this around. Okay, so now we'll shape shift it, move this up over here, and we'll do a very basic move. I had to super glue this guy. So we'll move this across and pow. So here is the process of going into some dangerous jumbling, some shape shifting, which lends it that little bit more of a challenge initially when solving it. Uh, now, pretty quickly, you'll find yourself getting locked up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep playing around with it until what I have what looks to be an impressive scramble. Everything.